Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Responding to spate of gun violence in American schools and communities, Ohio Republicans have offered two-pronged approach, guns and money. Last week, Republican state lawmakers passed a legislation that will allow local boards of education to allow teachers to carry firearm. Up to 24 hours of training must be required, but a board can demand more of its teachers. Should a board opt in, it would need to disclose to parents that one or more school workers are armed. Additionally, lawmakers have appropriated almost $105 million within the border spectrum of spending this package towards preventing such institutes and enhancing the school securities. Well, it might sound a good measure, but if you personally ask me, the problem of gun laws in US is that everybody has a gun and now you want to put that gun into the teacher's hand also and increasing the guns in the or the gun density in the school as well. So this is no solution. Like I said, US makes money from the weapons and now it is trying to give weapons into everybody's hand in now the teachers included. What do you think about it? Do let me know. Corbivax, the COVID-19 vaccine manufactured by Hyderabad based Biological E became the first vaccine in India on Saturday to be approved as the heterologous that is one that does not match with the primary vaccine as a booster shot. However, the vaccine may still have some hurdles before it is available as a booster dose at a vaccine center. The approval of the heterogeneous use of Apex drug uh, regulator that is the DCGI, Corbivax can be administered as a booster dose to those aged between 18 and above 6 months after administering the second dose of their primary vaccine that is Covaxin or Covishield that is for example if you have taken two Covaxin or two Covishield now it is possible for you to take this this new vaccine however before it is being administered that it still needs a nod from the national technical advisory group on immunization also called as ntagi that is the highest body of the experts that evaluates data on the vaccine before they are in, uh, included in the national program so let's wait and watch for this uh, report to come in and probably thereafter you can take this vaccine as your booster dose vaccination This week, the Defence Ministry said that India had conducted a routine tra user training launch of its nuclear-capable Agni-4 missile on Monday, reaffirming the credible minimum deterrence capability. Credible minimum deterrence capability is a word what you should use in your exam and in the interview. And uh, you should know that Agni and Prithvi are the country's two main nuclear missiles. This uh, successful training launch was carried out approximately at around 7.30 p.m. on June 6 from APJ Abdul Kalam Island in Odisha and this was a very successful uh, test as per uh, the uh, Ministry of Defense under the aegis of Strategic Force Command. So, Agni-4 is an intermediate range ballistic missile with a range of around 4000 kilometers developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO and it can carry 1000 kg payload and can go as high as 900 kilometers. So basically this is a deterrence against China and amidst all the world crisis happening we have just given a subtle uh, warning to China that we are ready with this kind of weapon system also. In our last update, we had seen as to how Finland and Sweden were preparing to get into NATO and how uh, Russia was uh, trying to blackmail them saying that they, he would take some action. Well, finally, Finland and, uh, Finland and Sweden are preparing for an enlarged NATO naval exercise in the Baltic Sea on Sunday. Amidst the NATO member of Turkish concerns over its membership, NATO's fortnight-long Baltop 22 is being hosted this year by Sweden with the Finnish Navy and the Air Force also taking part in it. Uh, military leaders have suggested that it's no uh, coincidence that NATO military drills is larger than the previous year's exercises wherein about seven, uh, 45 ships and 76 aircrafts of 16 nations are participating in this 
exercise. Both Sweden and Finland have uh, reversed their traditional policies of neutrality by making bids to join the 30-member defensive alliance of NATO following Russia's invasion into Ukraine. Uh, as of now, it is still pending because uh, it, the, the bid has been blocked by Turkey and uh, it said that it is uh, giving undue advantage to people. So we have discussed this earlier. Let's see how does this particular topic go forward in the near future. On 1st of June, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha signaled to the group of lawmakers just before they joined his cabinet that he wouldn't be stepping down soon, a move that falls short of a demand from the protesters who want his immediate ouster. The, uh, though he has agreed to whittle down his powers uh, when he met uh, the Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and few others, but he is outrightly saying that he will not step down. He, the reasons may be many, and uh, but the people are against him, the people don't want him, but uh, Rajapakshe wants to stay and maybe tie out some loose ends, reasons maybe whatever he might be giving, but certainly this is a sore point in the already uh, crisis prone Sri Lanka as of present day. An Israeli floating gas production unit uh, arrived in the maritime zone disputed between Israel and Lebanon on Sunday. This prompted and angered the Lebanese government, especially as the negotiations between the two countries on this dispute are still at a standstill. In abeyance for more than a decade, the dispute between Israel and Lebanon over its maritime borders have resurfaced again on June 5th. The Lebanese presidency warned the Israeli government against any aggressive action in the disputed maritime area and uh, this particular flotilla had uh, come into the area of the Karish gas fields where Israel is exploring and it is located in the disputed area of 860 square kilometers in the middle of the eastern Mediterranean Sea where huge gas reserves have been found in recent time. Israel says that is this area particular area falls under its econ exclusive economic zone and whereas the Lebanon claims that it is in the disputed area so it has called upon US uh, envoy to uh, come and mediate between two countries and asking him to help him restart talks with Israel. Will Israel uh, look forward to it or will Israel continue to it? Let We will have to wait and watch. But on the other hand, we have discussed last time that Israel was trying to you know, maintain or pr bring up its relations with the UAV with a lot of uh, so understandings and agreements. This week, the government of India brought back a proposal to amend the rules that govern the social media companies, including a plan to set up a new government appointed committee that experts have said will effectively take the final call and what content should stay up or is taken down from the websites like Twitter and Facebook. The rules for social media companies come into effect from May 26, 2021. It mandated large social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter to enable identification of the first originator of the information that undermines the sovereignty of India, the security of the state or the public order. The central government plans to set up an appellate committee to look into the appeals filed by the individual against the decision of the grievance officer of the social media platform. Besides. Uh, the panel has to dispose the appeals within 30 days of receiving them and its decision will be binding on the intermediaries or these large social media companies concerned according to the notification issued by the information technology rules 2021. Let's see if this is a good step which is happening then people will have more say in what this social media platforms have been getting away from. On 7th of June, a uh, center had issued a three separate notification amend amending the rules for the Army, Navy and the Air Force for appointment of the next CDS. We know we lost uh, uh, General Bipin Rawat uh, due to an unfortunate air crash down South India and the post of CDS has been lying vacant. Till date, uh, one of the chiefs uh, from the three services was eligible for this post of CDS. But now, as per the new notification issued, any serving or retired Lieutenant General, Air Marshal and Vice Admiral under the age of 62 are eligible for this post. 
with this uh, stroke now government has got a pool of officers to from which this uh, appointment can be selected and i think it should be uh, pointed as early as possible because now it is almost some time that this particular important vacancy has been lying vacant in the armed forces post the covid-19 pandemic compounded by the russia ukraine war the world bank on 7th of june has said that it's cutting the global growth forecast by uh, 1.2% to 2.9% and has warned of uh, something called as stagflation now you should know and understand what this word stag stagflation is all about stagflation is basically a mash up term combining the word stagnation and inflation it describes an economy that is malfunctioning in which prices keep soaring while the economic growth the rate of increase in the output of goods and the services slumps the lack of economic growth over time can lead to higher unemployment so the term a stagflation what you should know before i cover the next topic uh, let me clarify that i have no affiliations to any political things and i am i am anti politics this basically news is to bring out the facts and in case you are asked something like on this on your interviews you should be able to answer and to see the position in a very very clear perspective without getting biased well uh, we have recently seen one of the political leader pertaining to one party had made some remarks on a religious figure and she was quoting something which was taken and was blown out out, out of proportions or not blown out of the proportions i will not say anything like that but the question uh, that it was taken away from india and has been made as an international news is what makes a difference to us well this was started with uh, the uh, qatar giving out some kind of uh, marks on india and asking for an apology for something what happens in india almost every day qatar is the one which funds the uh, channel al jazeera and you have seen al jazeera uh, taking out a hashtag uh, india boycott indian goods much before this particular thing happened in india and since uh, al jazeera has a global presence this hashtag started trending and because of which this uh, particular topic went on like a fire and now it is said that after qatar it is it is said that almost 15 countries of the oics have participated in this and have started asking comments on india for which india has given its reply and had given a snub to the oic yet india has taken some steps wherein i think this political leader was taken away from her post this is giving out a wrong message to the world india needs to deal with its own sovereignty with its own uh, rules and regulations anyway i am not getting into the politics of it but please understand the overall uh, bargain behind this entire episode as to who is gaining from this and who could be the ones who we, which will uh, enjoy after destabilizing the india that is a point which we should understand this this i am for sure that this topic will die down by next uh, maybe maybe 5 or 7 days nobody will talk about this qatar uh, iran has already withdrew his uh, comment and statement and other countries will soon follow it and it will be off because we are living in a multipolar world wherein the central and the middle east countries cannot survive without indian help and support this is a very clear cut thing and let's see and hope that this thing dies down and we don't see such more episodes anytime soon The United States Army's Pacific Commanding General Charles A. Flynn, who is on a visit to India, has flagged concerns over the Chinese infrastructure buildup near its border with India in Ladakh, and called it alarming. And in addition, called it eye-opening. He was responding to the questions on the overall situation in Ladakh theater while interacting with a group of reporters. Well, uh, uh, the Indian and Chinese troops are locked in a tense border standoff in eastern Ladakh since May 5, 2020, when a violent clash between the two troops had erupted in the Pengong Soluk area. We had covered this in the last uh, update as to how the second uh, bridge is coming up in the strategically 
key location of Pengongso in the eastern Ladakh. And this is being done by Chinese so that it could uh, help its military to quickly mobilize its troop in this region. Point again, adding with my previous point, that uh, India is now, a, a, I must say, a emerging power and it cannot be ignored even by a superpower. So just the same, same US which denied to give us the GPS permissions during the Kargil war and same US which had been siding with Pakistan all along is now without India asking is making a note of such things. So such is the power of economy and India should focus its on its economy rather than the normal small small things which we put, pull us down and we all have a role to play in this and we should play our part. The Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor T. Ravi Shankar on uh, 8th of June said that the central bank digital currency CBDC also known as the digital rupee uh, will be introduced in the physical year of uh, year of 2022 and 23. The induction of this uh, CBDC will be a gradual one to avoid any impact on the financial and the banking system since it's a new thing and people should get used to it. We had discussed, I have a very detailed video on as to how China introduced this last year as E1 like the same way India is also introducing a e-digital rupee. Let's see how it gets into the competition but let me also add that our economic system or our way of our uh, financial transactions are happening is on the global scale as of now. UPI has been a great success and so is the rupee card. Recently India, uh, Indian government has announced that now the UPI can be added or can be matched to your credit card also. Till date a UPI could only be linked to your debit card but now it will be linked to it can be linked to your credit card as well so good step and we need to be abreast with whatever is happening around us in the world of finance as well the next news is a great news this time the state owned national highway authority of india has created a guinness world record for the longest continuously laid bituminous lane of 75 kilometers in 105 hours and 33 minutes on the national highway between amravati and akola district in maharashtra this is a superb feat this feat was carried out by almost 720 workers including a team of independent consultants who were working day in and day out and this uh, has been a superb event the previous guinness world record for the longest continuously laid bituminous was for building 25.275 kilometers of the road that was achieved in doha qatar in february 2019 and that task was completed in 10 days as per the minister mr nitin dadgadkari so a great news uh, and a great feat achieved by the national highway authority of india limited yet another great feat in the terms of medicine happening in the world around this time which is helpful to the mankind is that a drug called as dostar limab well uh, remember this name of the drug uh, and it is something that uh, a study has found that a drug this dostar limab has helped to treat rectal cancer and this has been described as a first time in the history that a kind of a result in a cancer treatment with disease simply vanishing in patients after the experimental treatment it was seen that the entire cancer has vanished so this has never happened in our history uh, of whatever mankind we know that especially the cancer part so those are uh, limab as a drug which one should be uh, used to this thing now what are the main features of this uh, entire uh, tri clinical trials which happened this was carried out on 18 patients all of them in manhattan this patient had a rectal cancer which was locally advanced that means they had a tumor in rectum and some cases of lymph nodes as well but not to the organs the drug was given to this uh, patients for about six months and prescribed doses and at the, the end of the trial the cancer was checked and it it almost was undetected through any kind of examination both physical endoscopic and other the tomog uh, tomography or the PET scans or the MI scans, it was totally gone. So as per a New York time, the medicine cost nearly $11,000 or it comes as approximately around 8.5 lakh per dose. So 
and uh, this particular medicine works by unmasking the cancer cells which in turn helps the immune system to identify them and to destroy them so this was inspired by a clinical trial conducted by dr louis a dias junior of memorial sloan catering cancers led in 2017 and uh, these people though had undergone a previous treatment for the cancer including chemotherapy and radiation but they still had that particular things so it's a great study and this study was sponsored by the famous drug company called as glaxo smith klein so a great news maybe this will lead a way for treating the so called cancers in future very soon the presidential elections of 2022 will be held on 18th of july and the counting of votes if required will be conducted on 21st of july as per the election commission which announced this latest dates the last day of nomination for the president has been set to june 29th the term of the present uh, president of india Ram, mr ramnath kovind ends on july 24th and the election for the next president is to be held before that day the new president of india will be sworn by july 25th a total of 4809 electors to vote in the presidential elections 2022 here no political party can issue a whip to its members as per the chief election commissioner rajiv kumar the president is elected by the votes uh, casted by the electoral college consisting of 776 members of parliament that is including rajya sabha and lok sabha and 4033 members of the legislative assemblies with a total of 4809 votes being cast the value of the votes of the members assembled combined is 543231 and the mpcs 543200 equaling to 10,86,431. the nominated members of either rajya sabha or lok sabha or legislative assemblies of the states are not eligible to be included in the electoral college and therefore they are not entitled to participate in the elections so let's see and who will be our next president any guesses do comment in the comment section below this week seems to be a very good news for the field of uh, science and medicine Uh, the next news is with the world facing a massive burden of the heart related diseases researchers in the united kingdom have developed a new gel that can repair damages caused by the heart attack the researchers have been able to support the growth of the heart muscles using the gel showing scope of enhancing cardiovascular treatments scientists have long been looking for a way to reduce the risk of this progression to heart failure however only 1% of the cell injected directly into the heart have remained in place and survived The latest research has helped in developing a new gel that can be safely injected into the beating heart and to act as a scaffold for the new cells to grow new tissue. The gel is made of chain of amino acids called as peptides, the building blocks of protein. The bond between the peptide means that the gel can exist in different states. When it's under stress, the peptides disassemble and behave like a liquid making it ideal for injecting. So a great news this time coming around. and i hope it will help a lot of people who are undergoing the cardiovascular troubles india on 9th of june formally handed over the 12 high speed uh, guard boats constructed under the government of india's uh, 100 uh, million dollar defense line of credit to vietnam at a ceremony at hongha shipping yard during the ongoing visit of defense minister rajnath singh to the south east asian nation and uh, he wherein he had handed over this to them stating that this project was an example of make in india make for the world mission mr singh added that we would be greatly pleased if close friends like vietnam become part of our defense industry's transformation through enhanced defense industry cooperation the speed boats will be operated by vietnamese border guard force the deal was executed by larsen and turbo to bro and of the 12 boats five were built in india while the remaining were built in vietnam with assistance from lnt uh, hanoi has pro- uh, procured 12 high speed boats uh, from vietnamese border guard force under the loc extended in the september 2014 and in 2016 india extended another 500 million dollar deal with uh, vietnam and the discussions are underway to identify the equipment 
the they both have said that further such deals are also possible in near future this is an example as to how a country can become a superpower you enhance your own defense skills and also become an exporter of defense so th- this is a field where india was lagging and probably slowly after brahmos and every other thing now this is a second step so good thing good clap for india yet another good news the study in both canada and the australian uh, countries have found and that they have discovered that there is a kind of a super worm called as zoophobus mario and also something called as wax eating uh, insect that have been uh, have been making news it has got some special uh, characteristics like this particular super worm can eat and survive on polystyrene and polyethylene so basically this could be a natural solution for the polythene or the plastic uh, pollution happening across the world and uh, it, it has also seen that this particular uh, larvae eats this plastic or polythene and gives it to the intestinal microbes or the gut uh, bacteria and the speciality of that gut bacteria is that they, they excrete glycol and after they have finished eating with this plastic meal uh, scientists are yet not sure what this glycol a form of alcohol could be used for in future but just imagine such kind of a lava being released into the landfills and the plastic dumps and etc so it could be a huge success for to deal with this plastic pollution happening however researchers are now trying to uh, separate this gut bacteria and develop it in a large scale so that instead of insects if we could manage to extract this uh, particular enzyme what the gut bacteria is using then probably we can manufacture it on a large scale to deal with this plastic menace a good thing let's see it works out well in future now let's quickly see into the section where we discussed as to what happened this week back in history this week 93 years ago george eastman demonstrated new vivid colors and contrast through his first technicolor movie a 2 minute shoot title when the curtains don't match the carpet color films that recorded the three primary colors in three emulsion layers went on to become so popular that people now associate them with nostalgia for the past with technicolor color became available in the service of drama and then it was gone with the wind yet again on this week 1984 38 years ago prime minister of in uh, india indira gandhi ordered military attack on the harmandir sahib popularly known as the golden temple the holy shrine of sikhism operation blue star was bloody climax to two years of fighting between indian government and armed sikh separatists led by jarnail singh bindrawale indian troops forced their way into the besieged golden temple compound on 6 june four months later indira gandhi was assassinated by her two sikh bodyguard This week 348 years ago on June 6th 1674 Shivaji Bhosle the founder of Maratha empire was crowned as Chhatrapati at the Raigad fort unlike other rulers Shivaji did not seek or need approval from the Mughal emperors to proclaim his royalty the improvised Maratha people were transformed by Shivaji's inspiring personality into fine soldiers daredevils and heroes of 100 battles a fierce and a relentless warrior and Mughals worst nightmare Shivaji evaded ancient hindu politics political traditions but also a secular ruler This week 117 years ago on June 7th 1905 Norwegian parliament storing and unilaterally declared the independence of Norway the dissolution of the 90 year old union between Norway and Sweden was due to the fact that Norway an equal partner was effectively kept subordinate to Sweden in all matters of foreign policy the two states kept separate constitutions laws legislatures administration state churches armed forces and currency so it made sense they went separate ways each has done remarkably remarkably well for itself since the separation
on June 8, 1912, about 110 years ago, Carl Lemon incorporated Universal Pictures as the Universal Film Manufacturing Company. In 1915, uh, Lemon officially opened Universal Studio, Universal City, the largest film production facility in the world. Universal was part of the Little Five in the early 1920s and is today the world's oldest film studio. The studio has served as a home to many of the most talented filmmakers and the most loved films of all times. This week on June 9th, 1900, that is 122 years ago, Birsa Munda, Indian tribal freedom fighter was reportedly dead due to cholera in Ranchi jail. Though he lived for just 25 years, Birsa was seen as Bhagwan, a god by his followers. To reclaim the honor of his forest mother, Munda launched a rebellion, the Ulgulan, and armed merely with arrows and spears, put up valiant resistance against the British rulers in India. It is believed that British poisoned Birsa. Also this week, on June 10, 1967, about 55 years ago, the six-day war between Israel and its Arab nations ended with United Nations brokered ceasefire. When Egyptian leader Gamal Abed Nasser threatened to destroy Israel, the Israelis accepted the challenge. Syria, Egypt and Jordan had underestimated the military strength and the cunningness of Israel. Surprising even itself, Israel took just six days to destroy three Arab armies and double the territory. It is one of the greatest wars fought in the history of this planet. Well, that's all friends for this week's update. See you soon next Sunday at the same time. Do subscribe to the channel and pass this uh, channel to the people who might benefit from this kind of an update. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye-bye.